Right guys, welcome to the channel and uh, tonight we are going to do the uh, live commentary between Munster and SAA. I'm wearing my Shark jersey tonight in support of my fellow Shark uh, players that has been selected for the uh, Springbok A side, which is Ntuka Mchunu, Thomas, the Tue, Pepsi, Butelezi and Upper Lille Fassi in that starting lineup. So uh, really looking forward to this game and uh, Quickly going through the comments that has been coming in, Mountain of Elysium says conditions uh, won't be the best. It's windy and light rain. I just passed traffic traffic heading to the stadium. It is a 41,000 sellout despite the conditions. I hope it will be a classic for a Thursday night. That's great, says Mumania and uh, Marcel Vasson. Are they really playing now? So they will be starting at 20 past 9. So in about 20 minutes time from now. It will be kick off to that uh, SAA game. And in uh, Leslie van Escape says, Will Guru take us through the match? Absolutely, I will be taking us uh, through the match, Leslie. And uh, we will go through the team lineups in just a bit. And then also maybe discuss what's going to happen on the weekend between the Springboks and France. But uh, our attention for now is uh, basically on this game. It's an opportunity for this SAA side to knock down the World Cup door and uh, yeah I don't know how many places and uh, we're quickly going to bring up this SAA squad um, looking at some of the players that has been selected here and you go through guys like Ntuku Munchunu has had a couple of games this season already um, so it's going to be a tough ask for him to knock down that door I mean we've got players in the likes of Kitsov, Malharba We've got uh, Trevor Nyakani, Oxner Shear, Vincent Koch, and then uh, also Thomas De Tway, who is uh, captaining the site today. And if there's one player that can certainly knock that door down, I, uh, I firmly believe that uh, Thomas De Tway might be that one player who can get in front of uh, some of the other guys. I don't know whether he will be able to beat Kitsov and Malherbe to the box squad. But uh, he can definitely challenge Trevor Yacane, Ox and uh, Vincent Koch for that elusive uh, place in the World Cup. So uh, in that front row, Joseph Ndweba has had a couple of games for the Springboks as well. Always question marks about his lineup throwing, but this guy's overall ability to uh, attack and uh, get over the game line is one of his strengths. And uh, this guy's massive, he's bold massive. So, uh, if he can sort out his line out uh, throws, he'll definitely be on that uh, plane. I mean, he's up against the likes of uh, Malcolm Marx and Bongi Munambi, and then uh, also a couple of other guys who's been knocking on the door. We know Andre Ikufente is on the bench here for this SAA side today. But uh, there's also guys like Akker van der Merwe who's been forgotten, Johan Groblar. Um, there's, there's quality all around, and even the Sharks. Uh, Hooker that has been out injured, I just can't remember his name now, um, has been quite exceptional as well. So it's going to be tough for Joseph Ndweba to, to lift out uh, the third choice uh, hooker at the moment, which is Dion Furi. Um, Dion has uh, surpassed him as uh, the number three choice for the hooking position, plainly because he can play in the loose forwards as well. But I'm sure Joseph Ndweba... <coughs> sorry will improve in due time and will definitely be right up there with the rest of them then uh, looking at the lock combination of jason jenkins and ruan orkia i think ruan orkia has been absolutely fantastic so uh, yeah um whether you will be able to knock that springbok door down i i don't believe so i think south africa are settled with the likes of Etzebet and uh, mustard and Luri Jager and Marvin Luri and Salman Murat and then also there is also the outside chance for Ergius Sneijman to be ready as well so I don't know whether Jason Jenkins or Ruan Orkia or even the likes of Dan De Prea and John Luke De Prea in uh, that lock combination will be able to uh, knock that door down um, just quickly looking at the comments Marcel Basson says uh, hi Mr Guru nice to hear your voice again sometimes I lower the volume of the game on TV to hear your commentary. Fantastic. Uh, thanks, Marcel. Uh, really appreciate it, man. Um, back to the uh, Knocking Dog World Cup squad. If you look at the uh, loose trio that has been selected here, Pepsi Butelezi 
Elric Lowe and Jean-Luc Dupree. Um, to be quite honest, and looking at the players on the bench as well, Dan Dupree and Sikabuza Notche. Personally, I do believe that only one player really here is capable of knocking that door down, and that will be Elric Lowe. Um, he's been in the Springboks setup now a bit, and he's played one or two or three tests already for the Springboks. So if there's going to be another loose forward selected out of the massive bunch of players that we have available, then uh, he's certainly one of the players that can do that. Um, looking at the halfback combination of Herschel Yankees and Johan Huesen, um, I think both players are capable of knocking that door down. And uh, I'll give my reason on Johan Huesen in a bit. So regardless of how good Johan Huesen is and how his form has been for the South African side and for the Bulls as of late, we got to remember that the Springbok uh, management has invested so much in Andre Pollard and Elton Yankees and also Johan Huesen. I mean, Johan Huesen has been at every alignment camp. Uh, he's been named in every box setup that uh, we know of. And now he's also been selected for this SAA side. So for a guy like Damien Willemser as a third choice uh, fly off at the moment, I think uh, I think the box management must own up to that and say to the people, listen, Johan Huesen, we've invested so much in this guy. Let's play him. Um, don't don't leave a guy like Buta Chamberlain on a leash, a guy like Chris Smith, and uh, give them false hope that they will be playing for the Springboks soon, because so much has been invested into that three guys that I've just mentioned, and then there is still Damien Willemser, so they need to be clear on that, and uh, yeah, uh, regardless of how good Johan Huesen performs tonight or not, I do believe that uh, he will be one of the players on that plane to the Rugby World Cup. Herschel Yankees, uh, he, should be, he should be in the mix, but given that South Africa now have got Faf de Kerk, Kubis Reynard, Jaden Hendricks, uh, and then Herschel Yankees, it's going to be tough for the box to take four scrum offs with them. So uh, he's going to have to show really well played today and uh, consistently perform after this game as well, if he's going to have any chance of... Uh, getting that ticket to the World Cup. Then uh, looking at the center combination of Cornell Hendricks and Inka van Beek is the one that most excite me probably of this game today is to see how Cornell Hendricks fare in this uh, kind of situation again. Uh, we know that he's played some exceptional rugby for the Bulls over the course of the last three seasons. And uh, there has been issues with his, with his health. Uh, there has been uh, some sort of, uh, uh, how can you put it, clause in uh, his contract when he was released way back then by the Springboks that's preventing him from being selected for the box as of late. I don't know if that has been cleared up in the meanwhile, but uh, definitely one of the players that could uh, potentially uh, raise his hand and being selected if he will be able to be selected for the box side. And Henko van Beek. Uh, probably the brightest youngster coming through in South African rugby at the moment. I think uh, if he uses this opportunity here today, it won't mean that he will get there. But, I mean, we've seen how short we are on outside centers. We've got only Lukanya Am and we only got Jesse Krill. I mean, there's guys like Andre Esterazen and the other ones, Franz Steiner, that's formed part, but they're more inside centers. So, for Henko van Beek to perform well today and keep performing throughout the URC um, definitely could grant an, an opportunity to knock that door down for the Springboks. Then uh, looking at the back three, Leland Zass, uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg and Apalile Fassi, I think South Africa are truly blessed with fantastic uh, outside back players, especially on a wing. We've got the likes of Makazola, we've got uh, Cheslin Colby, we've got Kurt Lee Ahrens, uh, We've got Sabun Nkosi waiting. Apiwe Yanki is making his return next season. And then there's guys like uh, Van der Merwe who's come through beautifully. There's youngsters like Kwan Horn who's done exceptionally well. And then you've got guys like Leland Zas and Zuleiman Hartzenberg who has been performing very well for their franchises as well. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if any of these two players will be able to knock that door down. Um, it's going to be incredibly hard 
But uh, I think Kirtley Arendse is a prime example of uh, what could happen. And then Cannon Moody is another prime example. So if these guys go out and perform really well tonight, then I'd, not just tonight, but in the future for the rest of the year and next year, they could maybe just uh, get into that side. Apelile Fassi, on the other hand, uh, will definitely have to raise his game a bit. I think he's very similar to Johan Kursen. But there hasn't been so much invested into him than uh, there has been done with uh, Johan Kursen. So he might still struggle to uh, find that uh, ticket to the World Cup. Then uh, looking at the bench, guys, Andre Ijo Fente, Simpiwe Matanzima, Sazi Sandi, Dan De Pria, Sikambuza Notche, Grant Williams, Sanele Nohamba, and Giovanni Lombard. Realistically, I don't think any one of these guys will make it to the Rugby World Cup. Uh, not because they are they are not good players, but there's so many great talent in South Africa at the moment. So uh, as far as realistically guys that can knock down the door, I've said it before, Joseph Ndweba, Thomas de Tuey, uh, Elrich Lowe, Herschel Jankis, Johan Goersen, um, Henke van Beek, and then possibly Cornel Hendricks is the ones that uh, could really uh, lay claim to, to that uh, ticket for the World Cup and they will have to provide consistent good rugby because we know that Rossi and Jock and the rest of the box squad management doesn't give away easy uh, caps. They've got their core group of players and it's going to be really hard to knock that door down. If we look at more uh, of the uh, comments coming in, uh, Mountains of Elysium says uh, this game will be the largest attendance at any rugby game held in Munster. There have been bigger at Munster games held outside the province, but this is the largest home attendance, which is 41,000. And it's amazing to see, and I'm sure that Munster rugby will benefit out of this as well. Let's quickly uh, go and have a look at the Munster site that uh, has been selected for this game. One could argue and say, yes, uh, it might be a B, B lineup. Um, I don't know them that well personally. I know that Mike Haley, Shane Daly, uh, Rory Scannell, Simon Zebo, Ben Healy, uh, Garen Coombs, Jack O'Donoghue, and uh, Dermot Barron is uh, regulars in that starting lineup for Munster, as well as uh, Kendallin and uh, also Neil Scannell and then our Mac, uh, well, Fekitoa. So uh, <clears throat> let's just run through the whole team lineup. So starting with the forwards, you've got Josh Wickerly, uh, Dermot Barron, Roman Salanoa, Edwin Edogbo, uh, Kieran McDonald, Jack O'Donoghue, John uh, Hotnet, Gavin Coombs, all in the forwards. Then in the back line, we've got Paddy Patterson, Ben Healy, uh, Simon Zebo, Rory Scannell, Antoine Frisk, uh, Shane Daly, and Mike Haley. And then on the bench, Neil Scannell, Liam O'Connor, Keenan Knox, uh, Kane Hurley, Alex Kendallin, Neil Cronin, Patrick Campbell, and Malachi Fekitoa. So a very good uh, Munster lineup still, regardless whether they're missing some key players for this game as well. Um, M Range says, Alles om te speel voor manne moet hand op steek. And then Bonga says, Finally the De Pria twins are playing, but I believe Robert uh, De Pria is taken for granted. So going back to that, and... Uh, Really thinking of uh, Robert De Pria in general, I think uh, there's something that uh, they're not telling the public at the moment. I mean, Robert De Pria has been playing some exquisite rugby for Sales Sharks, um, inform fly off in Europe, really, and or not in yeah in Europe and uh, yeah, and somehow we've decided not to select this guy, re regardless of the fact that we're uh, missing our two top uh, fly offs in Andre Pollard and Elton Yankees. So. Definitely something that's been uh, hidden from us. There must be something that is done or uh, something that he doesn't do well in a team environment. And I know going back to the Sharks uh, team environment, there were always question marks around uh, the coach, then Robert De Pria and the three uh, brothers, uh, the twins and Robert. So there was uh, complaints about the team uh, um, cohesion and also momentum that went down the drain so that could quite be something similar that Robert uh, doesn't listen to the coaches when when certain things are asked from him um, he might not uh, 
bring in a good uh, kind of vibe to the squad you never know there's there's lots of things that needs to be considered and uh, yeah there's just so much that needs to be considered when selecting your team and i think uh, that might be one of the reasons why he's not part of the side uh, quickly going over look at the uh, springbok team that will be playing on the weekend guys again uh, and uh, you look at guys that has already secured their places for the World Cup, I think personally, I think Willie, Cheslin, Jesse, Damien, uh, Dialendi, Damien, Willemse, Faf de Klerk, uh, Jasper Wiese, Peter Stef de Twee, Kulisi, Franke Mostert, Eben Etzebet, Frans Malherbe, Bongi, uh, Malcolm Marks, Kitsov, uh, Marvin Uri, Kwaka Smit, Kobus Reinach, and uh, Makazola Mapimpi have uh, surely all uh, play, uh, place they uh, or put their places in the world cup squad for the end of year too and there's a couple of guys missing from this uh, team lineup as well that uh, you could say that is already booked so there's limited places in that springbok world cup squad left and uh, it is a little bit worrying uh, that uh, we haven't built a little bit more on uh, getting some more players for this uh, Springbok side ready. We are stuck with guys that if we get injured, we are in quite a bit of trouble uh, Going into the World Cup. Let's say for instance Andre Pollard do get injured before the World Cup and uh, Elton Yankees gets injured during the World Cup then uh, we could be in trouble, you know uh, it's not gonna be easy and uh, I know COVID has restricted us in many many ways as well. So apart from the fact that uh, that was that to consider <clears throat> there's also other things that needs to be considered as to why south africa haven't been able to to build a bigger depth squad although we've got a pretty 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 good uh, uh squad going for us as well so uh, yeah uh, let me just add the scoreboard for you guys as well um before this game gets underway it is going to be a really great game to watch and uh, looking forward to it let's just bring that up for you guys as well so we do have the scoreboard up and running for when the game will start Johannes Payne says uh, hi Guru how's it going Johannes hope you are well and uh, ready for this uh, game here between uh, South Africa A and Munster it is uh, a game that everybody expects South Africa to win and uh, me included I would say South Africa A should win this game by at least 20 points today. But uh, that is wishful thinking. We are playing against a strong Munster side. Away from home, 41,000 uh, Munster supporters will be backing them to uh, win this game. So it's never going to be easy uh, playing against this Munster side. And uh, I don't know how many of those players are still there, which was there when Juan van Kran and Rassi and uh, Jacques were there. But uh, they are close to the Springbok Hearts as well, and uh, we'll see how it goes. It's, it's going to be a kickoff in, in a couple of minutes' time, and uh, history will be made regardless today already with the 41,000 people that will be attending the game in Munster, as Mountains of Elysium already told us a little bit earlier on. So uh, I personally looking very forward to this game. We will go through the team lineups in just a little bit again, but uh, you guys know exactly uh, what is expected in this game. So uh, I will, I think I will take a quick break, and when we do come back, we will be starting with the uh, commentary for this game. So please don't go anywhere. Keep the chat alive, and I will be running through the team lineups again very shortly.
Right guys, we are back then and uh, Mountain of Elysium says that there are a large number of South African fans living in Gork, so it won't be all our way. I expect quite a few box supporters at the game. So uh, yeah, it won't be all Munster supporters, but 41,000 people will be attending this game. So it will be a massive occasion. And then uh, he also says the expectation here is likely that South Africa will have a big win. But Munster Hearts always remember beating the uh, All Blacks 12-0. Uh, that and beating Australia a few times mean we still dream of a win. So it won't be impossible. Mamania yes, said full string Munster side would have stood a chance. Absolutely. I mean, if you added in their strongest lineup, they would have definitely been right up into that game. I would have personally loved to have seen uh, the Springboks up against the full string Leinster side, but uh, we might have gotten a couple of blushes down the line. So. Uh, a good thing that uh, we haven't thought of uh, doing something like that. Um, Walker says, don't disappoint us, Bok A. So I don't think that they will disappoint. I think the guys that will have to stand up will stand up today. And we might see a couple of surprises. But again, I am looking mostly forward to uh, a couple of players. Uh, let me uh, quickly get that up for you guys. Again, the Bok A squad. So... Guys that I am really looking forward to seeing today is uh, Thomas de Toy, Rua Norkia, um, Jean-Luc de Prier, Johan Goossen, Cornel Hendricks. But the guy that I'm looking the most forward to is number 13, Henko van Wijk. Uh, he's been absolutely brilliant for, this, uh, so, well, for the uh, Lions side and for the SA under-21s. Um, he's never let any team down. And I think uh, a couple of good performances from him in this game and in the URC, might just see him slip into that Bok uh, Ultimate uh, World Cup group a little bit later on next year. But uh, for that, he will have to play consistently well. Looking at the rest of the squad, Ntutuku Machunu, Chosen Dweva and Thomas Tatue in the front row, uh, the lock pairing of Jason Jenkins and Rua Norkia, along with the loose trio of Pepsi Butelezi, Elrich Lowe and Jean-Luc de Prie. Then uh, the halfback combination of Herschel Yankees and Johan uh, Huissen, midfield combination of Cornel Hendricks and Denko van Beek, along with the back three of Leland Zas, uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg and Apelile Fassi. Then the bench for the Springbok A side, Andre Higufente, Sampiwe Matanzima, Sazi Zandi, Dan De Prie, Sikambuza Notche, Grant Williams, Sanele Nohamba and Johanny Lombard. So the referee for today's game, uh, Carl Dixon, uh, all the way from England will be the referee assisted by Sam Group White and Ben Blaine while the TMO will be Rowan Kitt. So uh, let's ha hope that the referees have a good game as well today. Um, let's quickly go and have a look at the Munster side and just going through the uh, last uh, common mountain of Elysium says Leinster are playing Chile. I think that Leinster would happily swap with Munster. Yeah, I think they would have happily swapped with them. Uh, going through this Munster side one more time, then uh, in the forwards, Josh Wickerly, Dermot Barron, Roman Sal Salanoa, Edwin Edogba, uh, Kieran McDonald, Jack O'Donoghue, John uh, Hotnet, Gavin Coombs, then the back line, Paddy Patterson, Ben Healy, Simon Zebo, Rory Scannell, Antoine uh, Frisk, uh, Shane Daly, and Mike Haley. Then on the bench, Neil Scannell, Liam O'Connor, Keenan uh, Knox. Uh, Kian Hurley, Alex Kendallin, Neil Cronin, Patrick Campbell and Malachi Fekitoa. I'm not sure if there's any changes to the team lineup. Not Nothing that I've heard of or read of. So uh, this is the team that I had coming to print. So uh, if there's any changes, let me know in the comments section as well. Then uh, Walker says, Guru, believe me when I say it, France at prime thrash every team they face until it's box time. It's always tight to the end, but we always manage to beat the, them at their best. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it's going to turn out. Uh, I'm a little bit worried for this game. And uh, I mean, like I said at the beginning, um, as much as I love my Springbok side and, uh, and uh, how things are going, we need to be realistic on this tour as well. I mean, for me personally, I would go, go with a one out of four would be a successful uh, tour and uh, given the fact that we play Ireland, France and England at away or well, away from home and uh, I expected Ireland to win by more 
uh, on a weekend that passed. And the Springboks quite surprised me. Let's hope they can carry that same form into the uh, French game. And then we just have to, to see which French side show up on the day, you know. Uh, uh, I still firmly believe that uh, France still inconsistent, even winning 11 games out of 11. Um, they need to show a little bit more consistency. And maybe this team got it now. I think uh, that's always been what's lacking in the French side was consistency. One week they'll perform, the next they'll be poor and uh, not play well. So uh, going by what we saw last week, uh, I think France had a day off and we could get France in full force on Saturday. So uh, I'm personally not expecting too much from the box side on Saturday. Um, they've really surprised me against Ireland and done exceptionally well. But that, that they left, the, the Springbok A side has just run onto the field. So we should be getting ready for the start of this game anytime now. I don't know if we're going to have national anthems or not. Hopefully not. And uh, we can get into this game as soon as possible. Memonier says, wow, that is a good crowd. And then uh, Daryl Dominique says, SAA, make us proud. Go Boca. So we're just waiting for, for uh, Munster to take the field. They're not going to have national anthems. So we will get the game underway almost directly. And uh, some key players for this Munster side to look out for. Mike Haley at fullback. Um, the likes of Rory Scannell at inside centre. Um, Simon Zebo on the left wing. Gavin Coombs at number eight, which I think is their best player on the field today. Jack O'Donoghue, the blindside flanker. And then also the hooker, Dermot uh, Barron. We should be having a look out for him as well today. But especially look out for the number eight in uh, Gavin Coombs as Munster now has made their way onto the field here and uh, we are getting ready for kickoff in this uh, important SAA game which uh, hopefully will see some of these players really perform and uh, I don't think they will knock the door down to the World Cup squad today they need to perform today as well as for the rest of the remaining season as well as the next so uh, Good luck to everybody involved and uh, I know this is a historic event for Munster again today and really looking forward to do the commentary on such a bit we came and having the support of everybody watching as well. I think we've got around 87 people watching at the moment. Don't forget to press that like button and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And then Rian Tron sien uit om weer daarna om jou kommentaar te luister. Jy blij die beste. Thanks Rian, really appreciate that. Uh, also show your support by pressing that like button and subscribing to the uh, channel as well. So we are going to get this game underway. It's going to be the SAA side playing from right to left on my screen. And uh, again, like I say, Carl Dixon will be the referee for today's game. So uh, just waiting for the referee to blow on his whistle and get us this game underway here from uh, Munster. <clears throat> so it will be Johan Goersen to get things underway and here we go for the uh, first game of the season it is uh, taken in by Munster early on here and an early opportunity then for uh, Munster to clear this ball Paddy Patterson controlling that ball inside the 22 here for Munster as uh, he will be going with a box kick over the top Simon Zebo chasing after this one but it's well collected at the back by Apalile Fassi. He gets it out now. Up to the 10 meter line. Johan Gwissen trying to step past a couple of defenders. Up over the 10 meter line. Now Herschel Yankees. Out it comes to Jean-Luc Dupria. Takes uh, one defender. Gets the pass out to Ruan Orkia. Ruan Orkia sets it up between the halfway and the 10 meter line. Inside the Springbox territory now. Herschel Yankees waiting for it. Just securing at the back here. The breakdown. Is uh, Herschel Yankees looking to go with the box kick over the top here. And here comes the chase from Suleiman now. Suleiman chasing after this and nearly grabbing it. But it's well collected by Munster now. Out the back they kick it downfield again through Patterson. Into the hands of uh, Apalila Fassi again. Between the 10 and the 22. He goes high up into the air chasing down his own kick. But it's going to go directly into touch. And uh, it will be a line out to Munster between the 10 and the 22 meter line. Mountain of Elysian says, I hope that the pitch holds up, but play there 
in a school GAA football final many, many years ago. Flippers and snorkels should have been part of the kick. It used to flood that. So uh, the field does look in a pretty good condition at the moment, but uh, you never know. So line out now, taken here by uh, Derman Barron as they form the mall. At the back is Munster now. Barron controlling it here at the back for Munster with the driving mall. Now he spills out the back uh, support play there for Munster. Or has South Africa stolen it? Now it comes back. Gavin Coombs now pick up and go from him. <coughs> Just outside the 22 here. Patterson now gets it out to Idogbo. Idogbo sets it up between the 10 and the 22. Again they come. Through the back they go, a nice little offload here, here's space here now for Shane Daly, Shane Daly could go in for the first draft this game, yes he will, it's tried to Munster in the corner, and Munster off to a flying start here, some great work then done there by Ben Healy, and then also uh, the pass there from uh, Rory Scannell to uh, the right winger Shane Daly there, and it's try time to Munster early on in this game, 5 points to nil. Great work from Munster, beautiful hands, and splitting the South African A defense to pieces there. What a start here for Munster, as they're leading by 5 points to nil after just 3 minutes of play in this game. Wow, who would have asked for a better start for Munster? Well, it was the offload there from Anton Frisk, and not uh, Scannell, but what an offload it was to the right winger Shane Daly. And uh, Munster more than happy with the start that they've got here against the SAA side. So uh, let's hope that this trend does not continue for the rest of the game here. As uh, Munster will now try and uh, get this conversion over. <laughs> Mountain of Elysium says, uh, I feel bad celebrating but I can't help it. So a chance now for uh, Ben Healy. To uh, put Munster up by 7 points. If he can get this conversion about 5 meters from the right hand touch line. Twisty Bear is joining also saying hi crew. How's it going Twisty Bear? Conversion attempt. And it's uh, sweetly struck by him as well. So uh, it is now 7 points to nil That Munster lead here after just 4 minutes of play in this game. And South Africa A will have to wake up very quickly. If they want to uh, challenge this monster side today. Well, well, well. A start that you would have expected from the SAA side. As Johan Huysen restarts this one. Taken deep in the 22 by Gavin Coombs. Sets it up nicely for them. As Patterson now waiting for the ball to come out. He is going to pass it out to Dogbo. Who sets it up about 10 meters out from his own try line. 10 meters from the left hand touch line. Patterson now with a box kick over the top and looking to find touch. Not going to find it. Finds up Alila Fassi now. Fassi up to the 10 meter line. He goes off Munster. Herschel Yankees now waiting for it. Gets it out Thomas to a toy. Back in the inside to Jean-Luc Dupria. Sets it up just up over the 10 meter line now. Yankees back to Huesen. Here's Hendricks now. Hendricks out to uh, Suleiman. Suleiman sets it up just up over the 10 meter line. Yankees again now comes back to Ntukamachuna flat pass to Jason Jenkins who knocks it on on the 10 meter line of Munster. Patterson now in position for Munster gets it out to uh, Ben Healy who kicks it downfield into space and finds touch around about between the 10 and the 22 of SAA. Wow. South Africa A looking pretty good there but uh, just unable to get that uh, ball in hand was Jason Jenkins. From the pass from Munchunu. And uh, let's really hope that this trend <coughs> does not continue throughout this game. All Munster fans will definitely be liking this at the moment. So Joseph Ndweba then to throw this one in for the Springboks A side. Finds Ruan Orkia now. Sets up the ball just uh, between the 10 and the 22 meter line now for South Africa A. It's a good driving ball from them and Dueva controlling it at the back, making their way up to the 10 meter line inside their own half at the moment. Now Yankees flat pass this time to Cornell Hendricks. Good tackle from uh, Munster as Herschel Yankees waiting for it, gets it out into Kamenchunu. Nowhere to go for him as the ball spills out the back, picked up by Elrich Lowe.
takes it up to the 10 meter line now Yankees again waiting for it slow ball coming back for the SAA side here and going with the box kick over the top again now for South Africa the chase coming from Norkia but it's well picked there by Mike Haley gets it out to Scannell now it's a uh, it's again uh, Frisk who gets it out to Simon Zebo kicks it but kicks it straight into the hands of uh, Apalila Fassi who kicks it downfield up to the 10 now kick back here from Munster that one is going to roll oh, all the way over the uh, dead ball line and we should be coming back for a scrum all the way back Denko van Wijk waiting for that one as it roll over the dead ball line but again Munster looking exciting from the counter attack the kick from Zebo straight into the hands of Fassi kicked it downfield and then the return kick from Mike Haley just going over the dead ball line a on the 10 meter line of uh, Munster London of Elysium says to be fair to the box uh, Munster have been playing together as a team SAA only recently came together well they got enough motivation to uh, really play well today so uh, don't think too much of an excuse for them so Herschel Yankees defeat the scrum the first scrum of the game oh it goes down almost immediately and the referee will have to reset it. Romania says, uh, can our scrummy stop with this uh, BS up and unders? Well, it's part of the game plan, unfortunately, Romania, and uh, you're not going to get it differently. Uh, if they're not going to play according to the game plan, uh, they might not get selected for the box side. So uh, expecting Herschel Yankees to uh, kick a few more down. <laughs> Weather conditions allow for it, and... Uh, we see how much uh, France have been kicking. I think we're going to have a massive kicking battle on the weekend. Free kick here to SAA now. And uh, will they take it quickly? No, they won't. So I'm expecting another kick at goal here. Uh, uh, another scrum, sorry. Um, yeah, they are going to take another scrum. So about two minutes wasted already through uh, reset scrums at the moment. Philip Laren says, looking forward to see what Henko does with ball in hand absolutely can't wait he hasn't touched the ball just yet so uh, we've had nine minutes in this game and south africa with uh, limited opportunities so far as munster opened up the scoring after just three minutes of play it was shane daly the right winger who scored the first try now controlled at the back here good scrum here from the spring box a eh? penalty advantage now herschel yankees gets it out Cornell Hendricks, Johan Huesen on the loop around. He has a chance, another kick downfield here from South Africa. A eh? inside the 22. Oh, it's been knocked back here by the uh, fullback, Mike Haley. And he has to carry it over his own try line. So South Africa have the option of the penalty or the scrum five meters out from the try line. And uh, with no surprise, Thomas De Tway picks the scrum five meters out from the try line. Sapalile Fassi with the grubber kick ahead. And uh, nothing in that kick. And then the mistake from Mike Haley at the back. Allowing uh, Leland Zass to put pressure on him. So now South Africa A with a scrum. Five meters out from the try line. We've had ten minutes of play in this first half. Opportunity now for this SAA side. To get their first points on the board. And uh, I'm backing Enko van Wijk to get the first try of this game. Let's see if I'm correct or not. Herschel Yankees to feed this one in. And uh, we need a solid foundation at scrum time. Yankees with a feed. Solid scrum here from SAA. But the ball spills out the back. And John Luc Dupree has to gather that ball behind the advantage line now. So we move towards the middle of the field. Taken up by Elrich Lowe now. About seven or eight meters out from the try line. Right under the sticks now. Taken up Thomas the way offside here. From Munster, penalty advantage to South Africa. Now comes back uh, Jean-Luc Dupree again. Herschel Yankees out to Rua Norkia. Rua Norkia now five meters out from the try line. They're going to the blind side. Oh, it's been intercepted by Munster. So we will come back. Uh, Salanoa uh, intercepted that ball. The tight head prop. So we're coming back for another penalty to South Africa. Eh? And uh, let's see what they decide to do. It's... Uh, not sure where exactly, but it looks like to be in the middle of the field. An opportunity now for the SAA side. 11 minutes played in this game. What do they do? The SAA side. 
surely don't kick for goal. So another scrum here for the South African A side. Right under the sticks, five metres out from the try line. A really good opportunity for them as uh, Gavin Coombs as well as uh, Barron was offside there for Munster. Seven points to nil. It is Munster leading at the moment after scoring the first try in the uh, third minute of the game. It was the uh, right winger Shane Daly crossing over in the corner, converted by Ben Healy. So, uh, from a Munster perspective, a really good start to this game. Can they hold out? Herschel Yankees to feed this one in again for the Springboks now. Controlled at the back here. Much more solid from the Springboks now. Yankees out to Cornell Hendricks. Uh, Cornell Hendricks trying to go on his own. He's about three meters out from the try line. Yankees again now gets it out to Pepsi Butelezi. Just three meters out from the try line. Here comes the Tuka Machuno. Machuno just a meter short under the sticks here. Rohan Orkia pick up and go from him. Looks like it's going to be a forwards try if they're going to get one early on. Now they go wide. It's a long cut out pass and it's going to be up a little fussy in the corner for South Africa. And uh, the cut out pass. And uh, that is going to be the opening try for the SAA side. As uh, up a little fussy gets the try in the 13th minute for South Africa. So 7 points to 5 with the conversion to come. Seven points to five with the conversion to come here. And a good solid foundation laid by the Springboks A. And a long cutout pass from Johan Huesen to uh, Apalile Fassi setting up that try. Brilliant pass from him. Uh, knowing from experience that the space was on the outside. A brilliant pass from Johan Huesen. And that's more like the Huesen that we know. Not the one that we've seen playing in the URC as up to late. Mountain of Elysium says, good try. King says, uh, don't forget to like, guys. Thanks, uh, King. And then Philip Laden says, would have liked to see Werner Koch had a go. Another player with so much talent. Um, there is, though, question marks around his defensive ability sometimes, Philip. But I'm with you. What uh, better way it would have been for him to have a go. Johan Huysen from the corner. Gets the conversion over, and that's what we want to see in a Springbok uh, goal kicker as well. So a brilliant kick there from Johan Huysen, setting up firstly the try, and then getting a very difficult uh, conversion kick over as well for them. Robin Wood says, Guru's got an excellent voice, need to get him into politics. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Robin. So uh, Munster 7, South Africa 7, after 14 and a half minutes played in this game, it is going to be uh, Ben Healy to restart this one. And a uh, bit sloppy from the SAA side as they knock it on from the kickoff. It will be a scrum down between the 10 and the 22 here for Munster in the middle of the field. Mountain of Elysian says uh, you've got a proper goal, kicking, uh, goal kicker playing today. Absolutely. Uh, so from that restart, uh, it's... Whoa... Well, it was knocked on there by uh, Pepsi Butelezi rather than by uh, Apalile Fassi. So rightfully complaining to the referee there was Apalile Fassi, but it has been knocked on by uh, Pepsi Butelezi. So scrum down either way. Four months there in the middle of the field between the 10 and the 22 of South Africa A. Eh? Scrum down and it's a chance now for Paddy Patterson to feed this one in for Munster. Oh, the scrum goes up and it's a penalty to SAA, really putting the pressure on uh, this monster side and at the heart of it, Thomas the Tank at the moment. And Joseph Ndweba did really well as well. So Solanoa feeling the pressure there of uh, Nantuka Minchunu as well. So Johan Huesen then to kick this one to the corner. He's not going to find touch and that's what, not what we want to see. As it's again an attack coming here from Shane Daly. Up just over the halfway now. Patterson getting it out to the fourth. Salanoa. He's been lively so far now. Paddy Patterson. Out it comes to uh, John O'Donoghue. It's a beautiful little break there from Mike he Haley. Between the 10 and uh, halfway line. But some rolling there. And uh, we are going to come back for... Uh, a, well, is it going to be a scrum down to Munster roundabout on the halfway line from a little knock-on from the SAA side 
when they try to rip that ball from the uh, tackle. So scrum on the halfway or just inside the Springbok A side. It's half here, about uh, 20 meters out from the uh, right hand touch line. Blackbird says, I wish Ia van der Roos got more exposure. I will second that one and uh, I'm still I'm still disappointed that he didn't make the Springbok side for the weekend. Would have loved to have seen him play here, but uh, I think he will get his opportunity against Italy next week. So uh, hopefully we will see that one. Right, off the back now, Patterson. Oh, there's space here for Daly again as uh, Daly makes it up. Gets a little kick over the 22-meter line, but well collected by Leland Zas now. But somehow Munster's got it back and illegally so. It is going to be a penalty against Munster about 15 meters out from the SAA uh, goal line. So, uh, whoa, wait. It is going to be a scrum down to uh, Munster. So, firstly, a little knock on then from the SAA side, says the touch judge then before the uh, penalty was conceded. So, we will have a penalty, or no, not a penalty, sorry, a scrum down to uh, Munster and uh, yeah, I don't see the knock but either way give or take there it is going to be a scrum to Munster 5 meters inside the uh, 22 of uh, of South Africa A eh? Gideon uh, Blake he says rugby guru sounding like PQ Blade and great commentating thanks uh, Gideon really appreciate it Ashton, unfortunately, uh, if you don't have uh, a pay subscription somewhere, you won't be able to watch the game live. And another penalty there from the scrum then to South Africa, A, eh? And uh, they're really putting the pressure on Munster's scrum at the moment. If it's going to continue like this, I don't think Munster will be able to keep this up. This time, Johan Huesen needs to find his touch. And he will find it round about between the 10 and the 22 of South Africa, A. Eh? Missed his uh, first line kick of the day and uh, I just gave him credit for the nice cutout pass as well as the uh, conversion and then he went out and not getting his penalty kick to the uh, line. Right, Joseph Ndweba then with a the throw into the line out here and finds Rua Norkia. Good jump here from uh, South Africa eh? and uh, now starting with the driving mall up over the 10 meter line inside South Africa's eh? line here. Now it comes to a standstill. They will have to get it out. Herschel Yankees goes to the blind side. But uh, it's been taken here by Munster. They could go all the way again. But the referee's going to call him back here for an infringement. And uh, let's just see what it was. Otherwise, Barry Patterson would have been gone. Yeah, so it was just a knock-on in the tackle from Jack O'Donoghue. Herschel Yankees trying to go to the blind side. Tried to pass to Leland Zass then. Just a hand of uh, Jack O'Donoghue touching the ball. So it will be another scrum here to the South African A side. Run about on the halfway line. So Ursha Yankees then with the feet to the scrum. Run about on the 10 meter line inside uh, South Africa's A uh, territory. So as dominant as they have been at scrum time the scoreline still seven all here after 20 minutes of play in this uh, first half scrum goes down yet again and uh, this time we will have a reset scrum not sure which side it went down it looked like it went down on Machunu's side so it should have actually have been a penalty to Munster I think there but regardless they will have another reset scrum then I think Leland Zuss would have caught up to Paddy Patterson anyway before he would have reached the try line. But uh, here we go with the scrum down in South Africa A ball as Herschel Yankees defeat this one in for the uh, Springboks A. Credit says great commentating, thanks Ashton. And then Leonardo da Vinci says uh, come on Munster. So we do have some Munster support here in uh, Leonardo and Mountains of Elysium. Solid scrum this time at the back now. Herschel Yankees going the blind side again. Gets it out to Leland Zas. Bumps off one. Gets the pass on the inside to uh, Elrich Lowe now. Up to the 10 meter line. But the referee has blown on his whistle. It's going to be another knock on or is it a forward pass? Let's have a look. Leland Zas firstly fending off uh, 
Fatty Patterson and then that pass yeah just a little knock on from uh, Elrich Lowe there as he tried to control the ball sorry Paddy Patterson the bus is full uh, Leland Zuss knocking him down there in that uh, run up on the blind side Pitman says uh, Guru is our own Bill McLaren I fear Supersport might steal him from us soon thanks uh, Pitman really appreciate all the uh, comments coming in at the moment so uh, yeah it's uh, it's a great honor and uh, i'm very humble in doing this thanks to all of you that making it worth worth it and allowing me to do it now this time a big scrum here from munster pick up of the back from gavin Coombs. he makes his way up to between the 10 and the 10 meter halfway in the 10 meter line inside the saa site now as uh, paddy patterson gets it out now on a loop around oh there's a, a knockdown from johan Huesen, and it should be a penalty against saa Need to be careful not to concede a yellow card for that. But a slap down from Johan Huesen just inside the half of Munster. And uh, they will now have the opportunity to uh, kick this downfield here for Munster. Philip Ladham says uh, still no Hinko in action at the moment. Yeah, he's hardly touched the ball. And in the Riantron, is she Afrikaans of Engels? Uh, first language uh, Afrikaans, second language England. <laughs> English, uh, sorry Rian. Um, but uh, YouTube mainly um, the most views and the most people watching English speaking that's why I'm doing it in English uh, I tried an Afrikaans uh, channel before but uh, not with too much success right so uh, Munster now to the corner about 10 meters out from the Springbok A sites uh, try line and here's a chance now for Munster to uh, get something going Good opportunity. 23 and a half minutes gone in this uh, first half. Ashton asks, how are the SAA uh, boys doing at the moment? Not a lot to, to tell at the moment. Um, definitely very dominant at, at scrum time. Lineouts have been good. Driving mall has been solid. And uh, Johan Huesen has had a solid uh, game so far at fly off, except for the one line kick that he didn't get. So now the driving mall or penalty advantage now for Munster. About seven meters out from the trial line, Patterson now, Gavin Coombs. Gavin Coombs sets it up about five meters out from the trial line now for Munster. Patterson, back it comes now to uh, to, uh, to Barron. Sets it up five meters out. Thomas the toy quickly up over that. But it comes back now. Here's a little cross kick from him. And Simon Zebo had his hands on it. But uh, couldn't control it. And it goes over directly over the dead ball line so we should be coming back for the penalty to Munster the kick from Ben Healy just a little bit overcooked at the end I think and then Ben Quinn says hello to all the good friends here how's it going Ben hope you're well so penalty to Munster five meters out from the try line and uh, let's see what they decide to do scrums have not been good so they might opt to go for the line out again or maybe a tap and go we'll have to wait and see now they are going to kick this to the corner and Healy puts it into touch five meters out from the Springbok A uh, try line a chance now for Munster as uh, they will be looking to extend that scoreline of theirs leading the game by seven points to nil after three minutes and with the South African side to that came back into the game with a try of their own through Apalila Fassi. And the line out stolen here by South Africa A. Eh? Now Leland Zass controls it five meters out from the try line as Herschel Yankees looking to control this one at the back. He is going to give it out to the forwards. Let's see what they're going to do. Joseph Dueva sets it up. Still five meters out from the try line. Moving infield now to get a, a better kicking position for Johan Huesen or will he go for himself? It is going to be Herschel Yankees with the box kick over the top and uh, it will find touch right on the 22 meter line of the SAA side thrown to Munster. Ben Quinn says hi Guru you are on form as always thanks sir Ben and then King says nice jersey Guru I see you've got taste and then Louis say, says thank you rugby Guru for the commentar Kanidi rugby go Boca go and then uh, DM uh, McIntyre says nice boys right so Baron with a throw into this line out and uh, finds Idogba Idogbo off the back now here's a chance for them 
as the pass from Hotnet over the advantage line now Patterson back it comes again penalty advantage once more for Munster as they take it up here through Josh Wickerly five meters inside the 22 right in the middle of the field of South Africa and now they go on the attack again quick pass through Frisk gets it out to Healy now Patterson at Dogbo again setting up nicely towards the middle of the field Patterson Frisk again now it's uh, Healy of the back intercepted by Leland Zas but we are going to come back again for a penalty to Munster offside from uh, the SAA side otherwise Leland Zas would have been gone Mountains of Elysium says Pat Lineout from Munster commentary here we're very critical of them and uh, a chance now for Munster will they go for the three pointer here just to take the lead after 27 minutes of play it's right in the middle of the field and uh, you've got to take your points surely at the end of the day Munster wants to win this game but they've decided against it and they're going to go for the line out one more time feeling that the line out wasn't good enough the previous time so about seven or eight meters out from the Springbok A side try line they will have another opportunity now to uh, go for for the line out I have to be careful here there's 30 seconds delay and I don't want to spoil <laughs> right so another throw in now and and this time collected well by uh, Kieran McDonald now uh, another pick up and go from them as they're trying to control this one at the back just two meters out from the try line is Munster now as they're looking to build with their forwards now again through the back they come Scandal Healy long cut off pass to Simon Zebo, and he will be in in the corner here for Munster as Munster gets their second try of the game after about 29 minutes of play well done to Munster for their second try of this one <laughs> uh, David Erd says thanks for doing this remind me of the old days listening to rugby on the radio following uh, clearly Boca forever and then Pickman says Guru who come I get you say you for stone Afrikaans the year sickle like my Ali of them to prepare English proud with you no problem Pickman you can speak your language man and uh, Munster gets their second try of this game with a conversion to come for uh, Ben Healy. 12 points to 7. It's Munster leading at the moment. And uh, credit to them for really playing some really attractive rugby. I wanted them to go for the kicker goal. Instead, they give us 5 points. 12 points to 7. Uh, DM McIntyre, McIntyre says that Leland is a master class as well. So uh, 12 points to 7 here with uh, 30 minutes gone in this game. It's a chance now for Ben Healy from the left hand corner to extend this Munster lead as we go into the last 10 minutes of this first half. Right, so he was successful with a very similar one from the other side of the field earlier. Uh, Ronan McDermott says, uh, come on Munster, thanks Guru, keep up the good work. Uh, no problem Ronan, thank you for, for listening. And then Leslie van der Skaaf says, Lacker Pitman. That is another brilliant conversion from Healy as he extends the Munster lead to uh, seven points again. 14 points to seven as we go into the last 10 minutes of this uh, first half. Mountain of Elysium says, Delighted Munster are doing so well against such a classy side. Well, the classy side haven't had much ball, to be quite honest. They have been strong at scrum, they have been strong at lineup. They have been strong at uh, driving more, but just not clicking just yet is this SAA side. Right, so the restart taken in by Munster just outside the 22 and now controlled by Paddy Patterson. As uh, he goes to the box kick over the top and this time Mapalila Fassi waiting for it. Just uh, between the 10 and the 22 now, Johan Goersen. Johan Goersen gets past one. Still going is Johan Goersen up between the halfway and the 10 meter line. Herschel Yankees again now back to uh, Jason Jenkins. He sets it up on the halfway line about 10 meters out from the right and touch line. Now uh, Jean-Luc Dupria inside to the inside field. Now Herschel Yankees waiting again for it. Looks like he might be going with a box kick over the top now. 
as uh, that has been this the strategy but they go through to Johan Gwissen again Johan Gwissen caught between the halfway and the 10 meter line now Herschel Yankees again gets the flat pass to Henke van Wijk Henke van Wijk just up over halfway now brought down in the middle of the field taken up by Thomas de Tue once more just inside the half of uh, Munster now Johan Gwissen again gets it out Cornell Hendricks Hendricks throws a little dummy up over the 10 he goes now he's going to need support right on the right and touch line here Herschel Yankees taking long to clear and he's been tackled but the ball spills out the back now. Henke van Wijk on the halfway line. What can he do? Steps pass one. Needs support now. Just up over halfway. South Africa. Eh? Herschel Yankees again. Joseph Ndueva sets it up. Five meters inside the half of Munster now. Herschel Yankees a little bit slow at the breakdown at the moment. And uh, it looks like he's going to go with the box kick now over the top. The chase coming from uh, Hartenberg. Oh, it's been snatched here by uh, Hartenberg and the chance now for South Africa eh? from the 22 meter line what can they do they need a scrum off now Yankees right on the right hand touch line gets it up to uh, Jean-Luc Dupria Herschel Yankees again now Johan Gwissen flat pass to Henke van Wijk Henke van Wijk throws a little dummy can't get the ball out well tackled there by Barron and uh, now the ball comes back again for South Africa eh? back to, to Kamuchunu but on the back foot here for South Africa eh? As they have been driven back to the 10 meter line of Munster. Now Johan Gwissen again. Flat pass to Jean-Luc Dupria. Just up over the 10 now. Herschel Yankees back. It comes now. Jason Jenkins. Just up over the 10 again. South Africa now just slowing it down a little bit here for them. And uh, Herschel Yankees again going with a box kick over the top. This has been used too much. Hartenberg going after it but it's a poor kick from Yankees and the mark has been made by Mike Haley inside the 22 all that work comes to nothing stop kicking the ball away the kick downfield and it's gonna find touch right on the uh, well just inside the half of the SAA side why do you want to kick if you want to kick make sure that you put it in perfectly that was a really poor kick from him Rikas van der Berg says Yankees play stardach, he was not so gewees nie. Um, quicker hands from South Africa, they would have been over for a try in the uh, SAA boys, but now harder work. That is amper half tijd, maar SAA gaan die game win gloe in hulle, says Ashton. And then Nick says Irish team going to be the South African side for the second time in two weeks. Power gone, I'm switching off, says Johanna Spain. And then Tiart van Sel says, Luister uit New Zealand naar die commentaar terwijl ek werk. Uh, dankie Guru. And then Adrian says, Guru, how is Henke doing in the midfield? So, so far Henke van Wijk hasn't been given a lot of opportunities. And he's been really quiet so far. So uh, we haven't seen much from him. Probably a little bit less as, as from what we want to see from him. But uh, I mean, you can't just make magic from nowhere. So given give him chance to get into the game I think he will start performing a little bit better but uh, so far nothing magical from Menke van Wijk um, he has been caught on the back foot a couple of times but uh, at least his defensive efforts has been strong and uh, also he has been able to keep uh, ball in hand not lose it and uh, probably all that we want to see from him at this stage but nothing special just yet time back on is uh, Ndweba to throw this one in now for the SAA side just inside the half of SAA they set up another um, driving ball now from the halfway line Gideon Yankee says can iemand for me say who come start Herschel Yankees <laughs> right so here comes Herschel Yankees off the back now to Jean-Luc Dupria up to the halfway line again to the middle of the field Yankees back it comes now to Elrich Lowe sets it up just up over halfway Moving about 10 meters out from the right hand touch line here. Um, Yankees again going with the box kick over the top. Suleiman chasing that one. has bounced one time. Big tackle from Suleiman. But uh, Munster have controlled the ball at the back. Five meters outside of their own 22. As uh, Paddy Patterson now um, waiting for this ball to come out. Five minutes to go in this first half. The box kick over the top from Paddy Patterson. And uh, into the hands of Johan Gwissen on the halfway line who's had a really good game. He goes high up into the air. Apalile Fassi chasing after it. Oh, has it just knocked that on now? Here's a chance now for Mike 
Uh, Haley again sets it up between the 22 and the 10 meter line. Knock on advantage here for them as it's taken up by Kieran McDonald now. Patterson again, out it comes to uh, Ben Healy who puts it on the boot now. Kicks it straight down the middle of the field into the hands of Johan Goossen. Johan Goossen is going to kick this ball back uh, one or two or three bounces before it lands into the hands of Haley again. Haley on the 10 meter line going with a little chip kick over the top. Who's going to get this? It is going to be Munster through uh, uh, Frisk who gets it back now. Again, it's uh, Healy takes it up over the uh, halfway line. Now, Patterson again. Healy gets it out now. Why they go? Here's a chance. Jack O'Donoghue. Jack O'Donoghue straightens up the line here. Up to the 22 and couldn't get the offload. It's gone forward and uh, it will be a scrum down to uh, South Africa. A Five meters inside their own 22. If that pass went to hand, it would have been try time to Munster again. Poor defense from the SAA side. Right, so just to answer a couple of questions here. Um, Rian Tron asked, like Hwissen video. So Hwissen has looked pretty solid so far, apart from the one uh, penalty kick that he didn't get touch. Uh, he's had a solid game so far. But uh, just need to be careful not to kick the ball away as well too much. And then uh, Emil says, "Ons gaan terugkom in die tweede helft. Rikas van de Berg sê, daar is baie anders krammies wat hulle kon kies. Thinking of Monet van de Berg, uh, Zach Berger. Um, quality players all around. And then there's also a couple of overseas ones that they could have looked at. Uh, James Hall playing for Stade Francais, a quality player as well. And then uh, Cornel Hendricks is having a good game so far, says Philip. Yeah, he is having a good game as uh, that scrum goes down again with just three minutes to play. And this time it's going to be a penalty to Munster. And maybe going to have a shot at goal here from right in front in the middle of the field, just inside the 22. Ashton asks, who blasts the ref so far? I think he's been pretty good so far, um, to be uh, honest. I think he's had a really uh, good uh, game is Dixon. And uh, again, Munster deciding against the three points, going for the corner yet again. Five meters up from the SAA try line here. Mountain of Elysium says, great try saving tackle by SA. Yeah, maybe O'Donoghue just hang on to that ball just a little bit too long. Uh, if you could have gotten that pass away a little bit earlier, it would have been try under the post there for them. Right, so here comes the driving mall now from uh, Munster. And it's controlled by Baron at the back. Now the whole team comes in for this driving ball. The backline has joined in. And they're going over the try line. There's the try for Baron. And it's another one for Munster. And uh, this could get embarrassing for the SAA side. Not what they want to see at all. As uh, Munster gets the try with a minute and a half to play in this uh, first half. They need to be very careful. This could become a good score for Munster. 19 points to 7 going into half time here. Just a minute and a half left of this first half. Blake says even versus Munster, they box kicking. It's the Springbok game plan, guys. Uh, unfortunately, you won't get it otherwise. Emil says, Aksin Suleiman is knee Laney. He can tackle. Yeah, he can tackle for sure. A great tackle there at the back on that uh, kick over the top from uh, Herschel Yankees. But at the end of the day, 19 points to 7 with this conversion to come. There's still about uh, 40 seconds left. <laughs> Blackbird says, SAA, South African Airways. <laughs> well, they're playing like the uh, SA, SAA at the moment. So... Uh, yeah, maybe they've got the right name. Mountains of Elysium says, I'm doing a happy dance, but realize there's a second half to come. Can't celebrate too much yet. Yeah, this monster side has looked good. They've uh, executed their chances to perfection as uh, another conversion goes over. And uh, it's 21 points to 7. As uh, we will have one last uh, kickoff here before halftime. Ashton says, uh, SRR, come now, you can do So, one last restart here before half time. And uh, let's see what they can do. It is going to be uh, the restart then from the SAA side as they try and uh, win that ball. But it's, uh, oh, it's a penalty to the SAA side. 
<coughs> hands in the ruck there from uh, Munster and a chance just here before half time to uh, get some uh, points on the board here so we'll just keep that up for down for now as uh, we've got one last penalty here before half time right in the middle of the field five meters outside of the uh, 22 of uh, Munster as there's a, a little bit of rain coming down there light rain at the moment Johan Gosse now going for the corner here for the SAA side finding touch around about 10 meters out from the uh, Munster try line Mountains of Elysium says Munster always play above themselves against touring sites and they have been playing really well in this uh, first half credit to them whereas uh, South Africa A eh, just going with the box kicks all the time not getting their back line going like I said they've been solid in every other department scrum lineup more uh, forward play but uh, just that box kicking has not been done well the kicking game in general not well done by SAA at the moment and it's letting them down here comes uh, the SAA side now with the driving mall here 10 meters out from the trial line can they uh, get this one now starting to move forward the mall has gone down and legally so now Joseph Ndweba looking to go on his own but the ball has been ripped here by Munster and uh, it is going to be another penalty to uh, South Africa eh, then let's just see Jack O'Donoghue just asking the referee there what is going on so either way another penalty to SAA a very stupid penalty from Munster says Mountain of Elysium and then uh, Louis says, says big expectations for Henke van Beek hope he finds his feet in the game and gets more opportunities to shine well it's not going to get any opportunities to shine if we're going to keep kicking the ball away like we have been doing in this first half absolutely no gameplay from the back line whatsoever after the first five minutes of the game <laughs> here comes the driving wall again at the back now controlled by joseph ndweba and uh, another penalty then from that uh, for the south african a side and now jack o'donoghue gets the warning there And another stupid penalty by Munster, says Mountain of Elysium. Dom Fanning says, uh, our kids are the future, come on Munster. And then Rugby Lover says, Yamarek is locked. No problem, uh, Rugby Lover, as long as you're here. So the South African A-side going to the corner yet again here. We are about three minutes over half time already. And uh, now taken by Norki again. Joseph Nueva hasn't missed one single line out. Now the driving mall looking good from the SAA side. But the ball at the back spills out. It's Cornell Hendricks who knocks the ball backwards. And now Munster with a kick downfield. Munster kick. And it's going to find touch just over halfway. Time. It is going to be 21 points to 7. And it's really, really disappointing so far from uh, the SAA side. The driving ball looked fantastic and then somehow that ball got lost in that uh, driving ball. Uh, Blake says, don't worry, Coach Stick will call Coach Nini, sir, who will call Coach Rossi for help. And, and uh, Mamania says, Dweba Nokia is working very well. Maybe uh, Dweba should have gone to the Bulls instead of the Stormers. And then Ricardo Mulman says these uh, SA players overrated and then ESO amateur man embarrassing so far. So just a little wrap up for the before I take a break. And uh, from what I've seen in this first half, I'm not too worried about the scoreline at the moment, guys. I mean, um, it is uh, it is a very tightly contested game, but I think the Springbok A side is over them at scrum time. They're doing really well at line out time. Their driving malls are good and uh, Johan Gwissen is looking good along with Cornell Hendricks who has had some ball when they have been able to run that ball but the only thing holding the South African A side back at the moment is the fact that they are kicking every single ball that they're getting at the moment. Herschel Yankees either kicks with the box kick over the top, the chase is not good enough or the, the kick, the initial kick is not good enough so the chase can't be good enough. Suleiman is running his butt off to get to the ball in time which uh, which means the kick is overcooked and not done well and uh, 
Then you also got Johan Huysen going high up into the air and then just that little knock-ons in the air. So we're losing this game because our kicking game is crap at the moment. That is the only reason why Munster are leading by 21 points to 7. Um, credit to Munster. They've used every opportunity that they've gotten in this first half. And uh, if they're going to continue this, SAA is going to get, to get a hiding today if this is going to continue. But uh, I am going to take a quick break. And when we do come back, we will be doing the second half of this game. So please don't go anywhere, guys. We've got about people watching. When I do come back, please let it still be the same. Keep uh, going on in the chat. And I will be back very shortly.
Right, guys, we are back here for the second half of this game and uh, really looking forward to this uh, second half, regardless of how uh, the first half has gone for this SAA side. I have been very critical uh, regarding the kicking game so far in that first half and just going through some of the uh, comment sections. Uh, uh, let's see where we left off at the moment. Um, Mountain of Elysium said, Munster were lucky not to get a yellow. Um, the Irish commentators were saying we probably should have got a card there. Referee did warn him one or twice or maybe three times. So given on a, another day, they might have uh, been given a yellow card there. But we don't want to spoil the game by giving away cards. And then uh, uh, Werner says Yankees are playing so slowly. He's been really poor. And then Leslie says, uh, no net, die man het nog nie eindelijk saam gespeel nie. So the eerste game saam. So... Regarding that, uh, Leslie, like I said, the scrums and lineouts and malls and forward play has been really good from the SAA side. It's everything after that. We've only decided to kick the whole time. If, it, if it's not up a little fussy, kicking the ball back from, uh, or Johan Gusen kicking it back from the kick downfield, it's Herschel Yankees going with a box kick over the top, or Johan Gusen going for the up and under. Why is there a back line in the side if you're going to kick the whole game? Then regardless the kicking if you kick and you kick it well the chase will be good from Hartzenberg or from Henke van Weyck or whoever but the kicking has been really poor from Herschel Yankees um, he's overcooked every single uh, box kick so far with the exception of one up and under from Johan Gossen that was well timed and chased down by Hartzenberg but it's just not been good enough from uh, from a Springbok side uh, scrum off that uh, is now out of favor and you can see why he's not in the uh, Springbok side at the moment is because he needs to get more game time he's been slow at the breakdown he's been caught with the ball a couple of times by Jack O'Donoghue or by Gavin Coombs so it's it's the weak link at the moment is Herschel Yankees um, regardless of the kicking his uh, kicking has been poor and not on song then uh, Hansi says we will get the standard. We are busy with project and are happy with that. What we saw from the coaches, we are not playing playing very well. This team has the same problem as the box, uh, no ability to score. Then uh, Hansi says uh, Leslie van der Skeven, this is a verskoning. We spelen it dan ons het geweet wat voorle. And then uh, Blake says Herschel Yankees has been terrible for years now. He is still in the box setup, same as Faf. And then Gordon says, good game by the ref. Uh, Blair A says, the weather may be a factor, but Munster have had the rub of the green a bit, I think. Great stuff so far. Did the free names pop up in selection? I had a feeling that this was a lucky Packer team. And then Patrick says, Baie te leer gesteld, aas van speel, sonder enige plan, skop goeie balle weg. And then Hansi says, remember we are playing a team that could only win two URC matches this season. And that's what I said earlier as well. I did say that this uh, Munster side is not playing too well and they, they are a second string side but they definitely played phenomenal rugby today regardless and then uh, Cameron asks who's winning so it's Munster 21 SAA 7 and then uh, Mumania says in this the second rate team of the URC uh, Mumania also says uh, well pick a lucky packet team give them four practice session and uh, Bob's your uncle then Blake uh, says Erasmus is going to leave our rugby in a worse state than when Heineke May left in 2015. At least May have kept a lot of young players. And then uh, John uh, says they've been the weakest Irish province this season so far. Um, unfortunately, the, the stream is lagging a little bit, Luca. Uh, nothing I can do about that. And then uh, Philip says we'd like to see the ball going to the back line more. And then Blair Ray says Munster love showing up for these games so far. They haven't been as intense during URC but hopefully turning the corner and then uh, Yankees why kick every time as we're gonna get this second half underway then uh, Darren says are we playing crap or is this monster playing better so they're equally well at the moment as we get the second half underway it's monster who kicks off and Johan Gossen receives that ball and sends it back but not gonna find touch and here's a chance now for Mike Haley as uh, well Ben Healy actually taking it up over the 10 meter line here for uh, Munster they are going to attack here through uh, the number seven there getting it out to Healy again going with a little kick into space 
but finds up a Lille just outside the 22. He's going to look to have a little run. Gets the pass out to Norkia. Sets it up uh, beautifully for uh, South Africa. Now Herschel Yankees waiting at the back. Looks like he's going to go again with a box kick over the top again. Yeah, box kick coming up here. Yeah, Henke van Wijk chasing after this one. A much better uh, kick into the air, but well collected by Mike Haley here. Right on the halfway line. Taken up uh, by... by uh, Daly this time now on a loop around. Here they come again. It's uh, McDonald. Now they get it out to uh, Mike Haley again up to the 10 meter line. Tackled by Jean Luc Dupri. Now Patterson gets it out to uh, Barron. Sets it up between the 10 and the halfway line. Inside South Africa is half. The skip pass over the top finds uh, John Hotnet. Just short of the 10 meter line of the SAA side. It'll kick over the top and there's nobody at the back here. Here comes the chase from uh, Daly. And it's in fact Patterson who picks it up. Four Munster, five meters out from the trial line. Now Simon Zebo driven back in a tackle by Mchunu. Now about 10 meters out. Hotnet gets it out to uh, Barron again. Now the pass out to Idogbo. Sets it up uh, 10 meters out from the trial line. Moving towards the middle of the field now for Munster. They take it up now and it's uh, Jack O'Donoghue. Still 10 meters out right in front. They come now through uh, McDonald again, the lock forward. Out they go with a little grubber through, and this could work out for them. It's try time to them, and it's uh, Mike Haley who gets the try for Munster. Well, well, well. 26 points to 7 with a conversion to come. The little grubber through, and catching South Africa asleep again. Oh dear. That is how kicking should work. When you kick it, you should score it. And uh, Munster just showing true class there in that uh, try again. Brilliant stuff from them. Benash says this is a shocking result so far. It's uh, Munster B side for crying out loud. And then Walker says this team is a joke. A little stab through from uh, Ben Healy finding Mike Haley. Blake says, why couldn't they let John Dobson coach this team? And then uh, also, how can this be so easy? How many Springbok caps in SAA? I think 14 capped Springboks there. Nothing wrong with that. Mike Haley gets the try. I think our boys are trying to show Rusty something. Stand up and fight like men, says uh, Tom Fanning. As the conversion attempt now from uh, the fly off, Ben Healy. And he's been exquisite today. Gets the conversion over 28 points to 7 after just three and a half minutes in this uh, second half. And it's looking really bad for this SAA side. Players out of position. Apelila Fassi, Johan Huissen, not able to get to that little grubber through from. Uh, Ben Healy and Mike Haley gets the try. So, 28 points to 7, 4 minutes gone in the second half. And uh, it's a free, free try lead here for uh, Munster at the moment. As Johan Huissen will get us back underway. Well, definitely not the result that uh, the SAA side would have been wanted to look at. Walker says 65-21, I predict. And then Sakabula says terrible from the SAA side at the moment. So much potential but just not living up to the expectation as it looks like Grant Williams and Dan Depria is set to come on here for, this, uh, for the A side. Let's just uh, stop the clock there, move it back to uh, 4 minutes and 11 seconds as uh, we will see Grant Williams and Daniel Dupree come on to the field for the SAA side. I think Herschel Yankees has been incredibly poor today. And uh, just to see who Daniel Dupree will replace in this game. Uh, I don't think Jean-Luc Dupree has done too much exceptional today as well. Uh, Ethan says, on this performance we have no backup to the current Springbok 15. 14 caps, yes, but Bok caps have been given away too easy, says Robin Wood. 
So Herschel Yankees off the field then for Grant Williams, another Springbok replacing a Springbok. And then let's see, uh, Dan Depria will be coming on for who? I can't quite see who's he replaced, but uh, we are going to restart the second half then. And here we go. There's a deep kick in taken by uh, Gavin Coombs now. Sets it up inside the 22 for Munster. Now Paddy Patterson, the pass pulls out loose, but it's going to be a penalty against Jason Jenkins for playing the scrum off. So, uh, yeah, another penalty then to uh, Munster from just inside their own 22. A silly penalty to give away here. And the momentum is just not working out for them at the moment. Darren says, sounds like Munster is playing better. They've been playing rugby. That's the difference. Um, as much as they have a weakness in the pack of forwards, they're really playing with the back line. That kick not finding touch. And uh, Johan Huysen from inside his 22 is going to find touch right on the 10-meter line inside South Africa ace half. Not a good kick as well. Hansi Latekhan says, may as well put all the reserves on. Then they will have to have to take the field when Munster hits 50. <laughs> right, so not a particular good game from the SAA side, just kicking the game all day long while uh, Munster really attacking. Barron with a throw in, finds McDonald in the front now. Paddy Patterson out to uh, Ben Healy, gets the flat pass out to Gavin Coombs up to the uh, 10 meter line, right in the middle of the field. Now Paddy Patterson. Again, uh, Healy on the loop around gets the pass out to Jack O'Donoghue. But there's a little knock on from Munster. And it will be a scrum down to uh, South Africa A eh, from just inside their own half. It is uh, raining out there, so the ball can be a little bit slippery at the moment. Emil says, Who can't get the Stormers? He doesn't do it for not weg nie. He's not with the Real. He's the Stormers supporter. So with that one, Emil, I think uh, Josem Dweber has had a decent game, apart from the fact that they couldn't control that ball at the back of that ball before half time. He's had good throwings and stable play. He's taken it up. I've got nothing against the back of forward so far from the SAA side. They've really played well. It's uh, in the other areas where they've been really poor. The scrum now, Grant Williams on the back and into space. He goes up to the 10 meter line, gets the pass out to Johan Huysen. Johan Huysen up over the 10 meter line now, Grant Williams again. And oh, oh dear, oh dear, knock on in from Cornell Hendricks. Advantage now to uh, Munster, but it's been intercepted by Dan de Pria there. So we are going to come back for the knock on from uh, Cornell Hendricks. Not a particular good pass then from uh, Grant Williams on that occasion. Clean out the ball better, but the pass were poor. Philip Larum, very gewicht voordeel in die scrums. Definitely South Africa, eh? Uh, Philip, I couldn't see the exact uh, amount of the weight. But uh, South Africa, eh, has uh, won a couple of uh, scrum penalties so far. Kicking not working. And then Munster scored tries, says Terence. <laughs> Rian says, I think the Owens is a bit taller for Kansi. Right, so Paddy Patterson then with the scrum feet here for Munster. And a penalty advantage to them as well from the back. Now they're going to work it through uh, Shane Daly with a little kick ahead. And the bounce of the ball into the hands of Suleiman or Leland Zas. But uh, the referee is going to call them back for that penalty from the scrum. And uh, the first scrum penalty that the SAA team has given away. Um, Panach asks who's Dan on for. So I still can't make out clearly who he's on for. So it might be on for Ruan or Kia as uh, I think uh, Jean-Luc might have moved to, to the lock position and Daniel Depria to number eight. Or it could be Pepsi Butelezi who has gone off and uh, just trying to see because they didn't show who he replaced at the time. Uh, Blake says Grant Williams should have started. Herschel Yankees is the Jesse Krill of SA9s. Yeah, you could be true on that one. Although Jesse had a really good game against Ireland. 
but lacked some attacking ability. Right, so line out now as Barron's going to throw this in just up over the SAA 10 meter line. Taken by Dogba at the back now and here comes the driving ball from Munster now. Still trying to figure out who uh, Dan has been replaced. So it does look like it is uh, Ruan Orkia who has left the field. Now Healy out the back it comes now. A little kick ahead here from Munster but well collected by uh, Leland Zas. And uh, he makes the mark inside the 22. Shane Daly with that kick ahead from that pass and uh, straight into the hands of Leland Zas. Uh, Derek van der Jeffer says, why not read my comments? Sorry, uh, Derek, I might have missed it along the line. Uh, let's just have a look here if I can find it. So what was the comment? And I'll gladly repeat it again, Derek, but I can't seem to find it. And then Darren says, they must start running with the ball and use our wings. Absolutely. So the line-out will be on the halfway line here as uh, Andre Higufente also on the field. Now in the place of Joseph Ndweba. So Baron with the throw in then to this line out again. As uh, looking to find that one. And stolen by the SAA side. Grant Williams gets it out to Daniel De Prier. Daniel De Prier sets it up on the halfway line. And uh, just inside Munster's half penalty advantage now not rolling away. Here comes Ntuka Munchunu. Sets it up uh, again for the SAA side. Now Elrich Low pick up and go. Isolated in the process. But the ball spills out the back now. Here they come. It's Jean-Luc de Prier. Jean-Luc de Prier sets it up on the 10 meter line. Gets the pass out to Thomas the Tank. Thomas the Tour is still going. Now 5 meters out from the 22. Grant Williams. Johan Huerson flat pass now to Dan de Prier. Out to Pepsi with the lazy. He's up over the 22. Now needs support. Comes down again, Grant Williams, Johan Huesen again. Now it's Andre Higufenta, right on the 22 meter line, moving to the middle of the field now. Johan Huesen out to Henke van Wijk. Henke van Wijk takes on the attack here. Brought down on the 22 meter line. And the ball comes out again now, Grant Williams. Grant Williams tries to snipe on his own. Five meters inside the 22 now. Fenter at scrum off. Slow ball coming back now for SAA. Pick up and go from uh, Fenter now. 15 meters out from the try line. Elric Lowe pick up and go from him. Ingo van Beek supports him at the ruck. Now Grant Williams. Back it comes to uh, Dan de Prier. Comes out Johan Huesen into the hands of Pepsi with the lazy. Cornel Hendricks on the loop around. Now a bit of space opens up for him. He makes it up to about 10 meters out from the try line. It's Cornel Hendricks. Now Grant Williams again. Takes it out to Ntukamachunu. Ntukamachunu 7 or 8 meters out now. Grant Williams again. Gets the pass out to Thomas de Toy again. Penalty advantage coming. Grant Williams tries to go on his own. Gets the little pop pass out to Ihu Fente. Driven back in a tackle now. 10 meters out from the try line. Elrich low again on the attack. Still 10 meters out from the try line. Now Henko van Wijk. Double tackle from Munster. Just keeping him in place at the moment. Huesen again. Out it goes to Apalila Fassi. Still 10 meters out from the try line. SAA side now with a pick up and go from John Luc de Prier. Needs support though and it's uh, held in the tackle. Stolen by Jack O'Donoghue and we will come back for another penalty. So Derek van der says the scrum is not poor. It's the coach because they must play the game plan. Kicking, kicking, why not clean and pass? Quick, uh, let the ball go to the wing. Exactly, uh, Derek, I do believe that it is uh, the coaching uh, plan at the moment. Gerald Collins says Munster have probably five or six first choice uh, players playing tonight. Eight of them with Ireland squad and another three or four out injured. Any sort of win would be huge for Munster. And then uh, Ethan says Zas has been decent based on your commentary. Has he been at fault for any of the uh, Munster tries? No, not really. Uh, he's had a decent game so far as uh, Leland Zas. Definitely playing really well at the moment. And then Hansi Latakhan says, again, ability to score is found wanting. Seems like uh, Ruan Orkia now coming back on the field. So the Priya will be leaving. No, it's in fact Elrich Lowe who will be leaving the field. So might have been a, a, a temporary replacement then as well as a replacement coming on for uh, 
Munster as Zebo leaves the field and Patrick Campbell comes on for them. Nick says 28 points to 7. <laughs> yeah, it's the laughing stock of South African rugby is this SAA site at the moment. So, penalty. The Springboks A have decided to go for the scrum there. And about 10 meters out from the trial line, Grant Williams to feed this one in for them. The SAA side sound interesting when the back line is used, says Philip Ladham. Absolutely now. The scrum of the back controlled by Jean-Luc Dupree. Now they need to get it out though. They're still going now. Grant Williams gets it out to uh, Cornell Hendricks again, straightening the line. Not held in a tackle, says the referee. Oh, the referee says he was rolling. So we are going to come back for another penalty then to SAA from that scrum. And uh, the referee warning Jack O'Donoghue again. And I think this is the area where the yellow cards now should be coming if they uh, distress again. So another scrum then to the SAA side. The notch says it's not schoolboy rugby back in the 80s saying pass the ball to the wings. Rugby does not work like that. And then Quasi says I don't care about the results. All I want to see is who can step up and possibly make it into the box side. So, so far for me, really looking at the, the way things have gone. Thomas the Tway and Ntuka Machuna has scrummed really well. Norkia has been good at lineouts. Jason Jenkins have been solid along with the Dupree twins and Butelezi. The uh, scrum offs have been, Grant Williams have looked a lot better. But let's first see what happens from this movement here. Still solid scrum from South Africa. Now Grant Williams off the back. Gets it out to Juan Huasan. Long cut up pass to Suleiman. And it's Suleiman in the corner here. I don't think he was in touch. The try has been awarded. So uh, we might go upstairs for it. And uh, rightfully so. But I think uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg might be in and at the corner here for the SAA side. We'll just have to wait and see. Did he ground that one? Let's have a look. And... Oh, no. Foot in touch. Foot in touch. No try. So, no try then as uh, the foot was in touch there from uh, Suleiman Hartzenberg. And again, disappointing, but it is what it is here at the moment. As time is back on then, and uh, it will be another penalty to the SAA side, I think it is here. As we see Baron leave the field as well now for uh, Munster. And a couple of changes now. Neil Scannell, Liam O'Connor and Keenan Knox, I think all on the field now for them. Yeah, it is going to be the line out to Munster. Five meters out from the trial line. As Scannell throws this one in to the back they go. Jack O'Donoghue gets the flat pass out to Gavin Coombs. Five meters out from his own trial line. As Sampiwe Matanzima also on the field here for South Africa. As uh, that ball gets kicked into touch. Round about five meters outside of the uh, 22. More changes coming for the SAA side as well. Just have to see who all the replacements is. So, Sampiwe Matanzima on for Machunu. As well as uh, a couple of other ones. Let's just have a look. Sikambuza Notche on the field as well. As well as Sazi Zandi for the SAA side. Ansi Lata can say Hartzenberg definitely looking like a future star. And then Pitti Henke van Wijk is getting no opportunity to shine. So, yeah, he's not gotten a lot of ball when he did. It was on the back foot. So, uh, yeah, it's not been his day. So, uh, also on the field now is Kendallin for Gavin Coombs. The throwing from Andre Ijofenta now. The driving ball set up here by SAA right on the 22 meter line. Can they do something here with this one as the SAA side? Still coming. Driving it on is the SAA team. Andre Ijofenta. At the back now, Grant Williams off the back. Cornell Hendricks takes it up. Held up well in the tackle there. Just outside the 22 now, Grant Williams. Sampiwe Matanzima sets it up. Now right on the 22 meter line again. Here they come now through uh, Sikambuza Notche. Grant Williams out to uh, Dan De uh, John Luke Dupree now. Five meters inside the 22 they go. The little pop pass back to uh, Daniel Dupree now. 
Just about 10 meters out from the trial. And now Sukumu's a notch here again. Support play there now. Grant Williams again. Out to uh, Sazi Zandi. Good defense from uh, Munster. As the ball comes back to the SAA side. 10 meters out from the trial line. Now it's uh, taken up by Dan Dupree again. Good uh, counter ruck from uh, Munster. But it's not who goes with it again. Just working with the forwards at the moment. Grant Williams. Sazi Zandi again. Now needs support play. Grant Williams again. The pop pass to uh, Daniel De Prea. Daniel De Prea sets it up 10 meters out from the trial line. Brilliant defense from Munster. Sikambu's a notch here. Driven back in the tackle by Jack O'Donoghue. Now Grant Williams again goes with a little snipe on his own. Tries to uh, spin out of one tackle. Now Fassi at scrum off. He's going to try and pick up and go from him. Support there from Sazi Zandi. Quickly up over it. Grant Williams now again. Here they come through Sikambuza Notche. Five or seven, six meters out from the try line. Grant Williams now waiting for this ball. Gets it back now. Here comes uh, Sazi Zandi. Grant Williams now. John looked to Priya. Five meters out towards the middle of the field. Now Grant Williams again. Sampiwe Matanzima. Matanzima sets it up five meters out. Grant Williams again. Here they come through Sazi Zandi. Sazi Zandi three meters out from the trial and right under the sticks here for South Africa. Williams to Dan Depria. Dan Depria breaks through one, two meters out from the trial line here. Grant Williams again now takes it up. Oh, just a meter short of South Africa now. Quick ball needed. Grant Williams get that ball out. It's not coming for them at the moment. The referee blows on his whistle. And uh, let's just see. Will we have a scrum down or was it held up over the try line? Time is still up on the clock here. So they are going to stop the clock. And I'm not sure if uh, Sikambuza Notche is uh, claiming the try here or whether he's been held up. Ethan asked, where are the line centers? Where are you at? At least there's a chance in the game, says Terence. And then Pinach says, what the hell is Sazi doing in the site? Seriously. So, uh, yeah, very different from the first half where we kicked a lot. Uh, it's different now. We're just using our forwards all the time. Backline, <laughs> non-existent at the moment in attack. They're just picking up and going. First receiver from the scrum off to the forwards, driving it up. Slow ball, slow ball, driving it up. But uh, again, just not able to cross the line. The backline, non-existent at the moment. And I think Sikambuza Notch has been held up over the try line. So this will mean that we might even have a uh, goal line dropout coming up here. Or we might see another penalty for South Africa. Eh? Benash says the Priya Twins as usual making an impression. Let me be honest with you. Uh, the back of forwards absolutely brilliant today from South Africa. Eh? They've taken the ball up. They've done really well. Line out solid, scrum solid, mall solid, and uh, really giving their all at the moment. Even the replacements that has come onto the field, Sandy, Matanzima, um, the likes of Hijo Fenta, everybody is playing their part at the moment. The De Priet twins have been really good as well. So Sikambuza, Nache, Pepsi, Butelezi, all of them have been in exceptional form today. So you can't see a clear grounding from this angle and from that angle just short by the looks of it. So I think we might even come back here for a scrum down to uh, South Africa A. Eh? We've had uh, 20 minutes in the second half. Uh, we should um, hopefully see something special from this SAA site here in the last 20 minutes of the game. Robin Wood says we need overseas coaches for the box backline as well. And then uh, Ethan asks who is our backline coach? Because let's face it, as a unit, it's the worst part of our game. Springboks and SAA. So by my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, but South Africa do not have a, a backline coach at the moment. I think Swayze the Brain was the backline coach. And since he left, South Africa has been playing on without a... Uh, backline coach and it clearly shows it clearly it clearly shows in the lineup Quisson being replaced by Gianni Lombard now as well 
in this uh, SAA site. We are going to have a scrum down to SAA, five meters out from the trial line. Ethan says, well, if that is true, it explains a lot. Bernard says, Stick is the attack coach. Yeah, but he's the assistant coach. He's not uh, the backline coach, as far as my knowledge, Bernard. But uh, I might be wrong. Uh, I'm talking under correction. So here comes the yellow card for Munster from the scrum. And uh, it is unfortunately going to be a team yellow card there for Munster. And it's uh, the uh, Lucet prop who's paying the price there. The replacement loose head prop in uh, Liam O'Connor, who gets the yellow card. Right, so another scrum down in for the SAA side. This time, they are going to do it without Liam O'Connor for Munster. And uh, with that, they're going to bring on, I think, uh, back on Josh, Wicker, Josh Wickerly. And then uh, they will have to... Uh, Bring off uh, Neil Scannell or either Jack or John uh, Hotnet or even uh, Alex Kendallin. Mountain of Elysium asks why South Africa continually trying to punch through the centre. If you were spreading it out wide, uh, you would uh, have a few tries. Exactly my point. Uh, they've gone from box kicking in the first half to a solo performance of the forwards where the back line absolutely non-existent at the moment so yeah we can leave back on in for uh, Munster as uh, here comes a big push from the SAA side this one picked up and driven over the try line it should be claimed here by the SAA side and I think it's uh, one of the forward replacements uh, Sikombuza Notche this time who could be claiming this try as uh, they are going to go upstairs one more time for this one. Sakabula says, bring in Razor. If New Zealand doesn't want him, send him to the Boca. Robin says, we got good players, just not coached right. And that looked like a try. It definitely did look like a try there, uh, Mountain of Elysium. Yeah, he dotted it down. So it should be a try to uh, Sikambuza Nache. And that will bring up the scoreboard to 28 points to 12 with the uh, conversion to come. So Sikambuza Notche gets a try here for South Africa A. Eh? And is there still a fight back spirit left with 17 minutes to play in the second half? Yeah, the try has been uh, awarded here to the Springbok A side. And it's going to be Gianni Lombard or Gianni Lombard to uh, take this conversion. Benash has agreed. Razor for Bok coach. Imagine. And then back into the game now, says Robin Wood. This game has helped me remember why I support Munster. Form has been bad this season. And it must be brilliant uh, to be able to witness this as a Munster fan at the moment. Great effort from them. 28 points to 14 with 17 minutes to play in this game. Uh, Ethan says, has Neil Powell had an impact yet at the Sharks? Is the backline coach there? Yeah, he had his uh, first run on against the Bulls uh, last time round where, round where we got hammered by the Bulls. So, yeah, it, it wasn't a good start then for Powell. So, restart then now to come here as more replacements comes on. Kian Hurley also on for uh, Idogbo. Mountain of Elysium says, deserve try there and with Munster on a yellow, I think South Africa pull it back. I hope not, of course. I'm a Munster fan. Right, so the restart knocked on by South Africa. A, hey, and here comes Munster from between the 22 and the 10 meter line. Barry Patterson now gets it out through the back. Uh, ben Healy has knocked it on as well. So we will come back for the first knock on then from uh, South Africa hey, as uh, Feki Toa now also on the field here for Munster. Bringing the New Zealand midfielder here for them. <laughs> and then uh, let's have a look here. I don't know who he's on for, but we'll find out in a bit. So scrum down to Munster then. From just outside the 22, between the 22 and the 10 meter line of the SAA side. 
Can uh, South Africa hey, still come back into this game? Only have 41 people watching the stream at the moment. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it just shows you how disappointing the South African fans are at the moment. Out the back they go and uh, taken up there by McDonald. Now driven back in the tackle as uh, Paddy Patterson have to put it up again for Neil Scannell now. Neil Scannell trying to uh, set this up for Munster now. Here they come once again. Here's Munster from between the 22 and the 10 meter line. What can they conjure up from here? Not uh, making yardage at the moment. There's Munster, Paddy Patterson. Back it comes again. And out wide they go. Mike Haley here gets the little kick away. And nobody chasing after that. And uh, it's going to be Leland Zaster dotted down over the uh, try line. So it will be a 22 meter dro uh, goal line dropout here for them. Ethan says, SAA man, not bothered. Can laugh about it more. Check out individuals if anyone is putting their hands up to be considered for the box. So I would say the whole pack of forwards have been brilliant today. And uh, we have a stoppage in play for an injury to one of their players. Oh, now he's suddenly back on his feet. So the restart then from the SAA from the goal line as uh, they set it up again. It's uh, through the uh, back. Mike Haley sets it up between the 22 and the 10 meter line. Now Patterson again on a loop around. It's Ben Healy. Long cut out pass now to Shane Daly. Shane Daly has been good. Cuts back inside. Stop though and uh, isolated. It's going to be a penalty against South Africa though. And Sikambuza Notche gets penalized for that. I must say I think Cornell Hendricks have been brilliant at inside center today for this SAA side. As much as uh, I would have loved to have seen Henke van Beek step up. He's hardly seen any ball today. But defensively and uh, in support play, he's been good. Uh, Leland Zass and Arsenberg haven't had plenty of opportunities in this game. While Apalile Fassi also limited. As uh, Ben Healy now will kick this to the corner again for Munster. Hansi Latekhan says, you are using the word, word brilliant very loosely. Uh... Declan says, I'm listening from Canada. Thank you for putting it on. No problem, Declan. Yeah, Hansi, uh, I'm probably putting the word uh, Brilliant very loosely. So he's had a decent game is, uh, is Cornell Hendricks. Some of these guys might be again in against Italy and it get trashed by Italy, says Robin Wood. So the line out now, 10 meters out from the uh, Springbok A trial line as uh, Neil Scannell throws this one in. Out the back and collected by Grant Williams for South Africa as he kicks it downfield and finds touch roundabout between the 10 meter line inside South Africa side. Dick uh, says, listening from Florida in the USA. Thanks uh, for this, boss. No problem, Dick. So, uh, with 12 minutes to play, 28 points to 14. Munster could have won this game already if they had taken their kicks at goal throughout. Hansi says, I don't think there's anyone on the field knocking on the door for the box at the moment. Yeah, now look, uh, looking at the current Springbok side and the ones playing here today, apart from the fact that the forwards have been good, um, nobody's going to knock that door down based on this performance. So, looks like it's going to be another penalty then to Munster from between the 10 and the 22 of South Africa. And uh, this is about 5 meters from the right and touch line. As uh, they will kick this to the corner yet again. The says you can't judge players based on one scratch side performance. Absolutely. And that's what I said at the start of this game. Uh, regardless, they need to perform in this game and for the rest of the season. And the start of next season to have any chance of making it into this uh, Springbok side. So I don't know how they said that you can knock the door down in this game. Firstly, you're putting tremendous lot of pressure on the side, on the players, and uh, secondly, you can just have an off day like they're having today, and you can't base it on that. Ansi says, on the other end, it is at this level you have to take your chances. True. Here comes another driving ball from uh, Munster now, 10 meters out from the try line. 
as uh, Paddy Patterson. Oh, they're making some headway here through the forts now. And uh, having a look at it. Oh, it's been turned over by South Africa. Hey, now Rua Norkia at scrum off. Now Matanzima. Matanzima sets it up about 10 meters out from the trial line. And uh, waiting for it now, Grant Williams. Ganar says Jenkins, for instance, is far, far better player than Ori. And I second that completely. Going with the box kick over the top is SAA. The bounce of the ball kindly there for uh, Patrick Campbell. Gets the pass out, but it's sloppy and collected by the SAA side now. As Henke van Wijk throws it back into play. But the referee has uh, called on his whistle here for a forward pass. It will be a scrum down to South Africa. Eh? With nine minutes to play in this game. RB Kuhn says, who can you say the voorspelers is good as let in a beerspan spiel? Well, just based on the game, uh, RB, uh, I mean, uh, I can't lie and say that they've been average against uh, a Munster B side. It is what it is. They played some really good rugby today. But, uh, yeah, the backline has been non existent and they haven't been able to get the points from the forwards, unfortunately. But uh, if you have to look at this. Uh, must decide, and you have to ask who of them will make the Springbok side. I would almost say the fly half Ben Healy, the scrum off Paddy Patterson, um, the outside centre Antoine Fringe, Shane Daly, the right winger, um, Gavin Coombs, the number eight. Well, I won't replace him with Jasper though. Um, the likes of. Uh, yeah, that's where I'll leave it. But I had a couple of really good players in this lineup today. Cornell Hendricks takes it up now. Simpiwe Matanzima sets it up over the 10 meter line inside South Africa's territory now. Driven up by Sikambuza Noche, who's been impressive since he's come onto the field. We are going to come back for a penalty taken quickly by Grant Williams. Though he doesn't have a lot of support. Now gets it out to Enko van Wijk. Enko van Wijk cuts back inside. He's up to the 10 meter line and isolated. But the uh, referee going to play an advantage to South Africa. Now Andre Igelfenter with a roll pass. Palila Fassi kicks it ahead. And uh, it's well collected there by Mike Gailey. But the referee will call them back for the penalty. Off their feet from uh, that tackle on Henke van Wijk, says the referee. And uh, a chance now again for South Africa A to kick this to the corner and set something up. Benash says uh, Notchi is a class player and uh, Hansi says Notchi has been lively. Snap as you said it. <coughs> okay, so Gianni or Gianni Lombard now to uh, kick this one for South Africa to the corner. We've got seven minutes to play. The forwards already in a massive discussion here as to what they will be trying to do. Touch found. About five meters inside the 22, so not a great kick from uh, Gianni Lombard there, but a chance now, if any, to get things going again for them. Uh, Philip asks, how's the support at the breakdown, Guru? So it's been pretty good, Philip. Uh, Philip. I think uh, it's the one area apart from, well, brilliant clean up after that one from Enke van Wijk, but overall the uh, clean up has been really good. The support play. At the breakdown has been really good. Here comes the driving ball from South Africa again now. Grant Williams waiting for it. Cornell Hendrick is going to run straight into it. About uh, 10 meters out from the try line now. Here comes Andre Higufenta. Grant Williams again waiting now. It's uh, taken up by Zazi Zandi. Oh, he might be held up in the tackle there. Driven back by the defense. Grant Williams again. Now Norkia. Norkia sets it up 10 meters out from the try line. Moving towards the middle of the field now. Sampiwe Matanzima. Another go here from the SAA. As uh, Grant Williams waiting for it now. Jean Luc de Prier back on inside to uh, Daniel de Prier. But he knocks it on. And the referee will call him back for another penalty here to the SAA side. Hansi Latekan says, Kwesen was poor. I hope all the believers that think he is our fly-off saviour. We'll go back to sleep. So uh, disappointing 
in the end from him after a really good start from Kwasin. Also, you know, it's difficult to really give the backline in that first half uh, a proper rating <coughs> because, quite frankly, they, they have never ever had the opportunity to play in this uh, first or second half, really. As San Eleno Hamba comes onto the field and it looks like my voice want to leave me. As Fassi replaces, or no, Hamba replaces Fassi. Not sure. Gianni will probably go to fullback with San Eleno Hamba now. Going to uh, scrum off. Up to fly off, sorry. So, given that uh, Hansi can't really say Huesen was poor. They just didn't get the opportunity. Although Hansi says Huesen had enough ball to play with. Give or take, Hansi. I, uh, I can't really uh, agree or disagree on your comment there of, around Huesen. Because for me, unfortunately, he didn't get enough time. The player of the match uh, is the scrum off Paddy Patterson for Munster. And uh, well deserved for him as well. Grant Williams now to feed this one in for SAA. 10 meters out from the try line. <coughs> no, he's not a dominating 10. Absolutely agree. So here comes the big drive again from the SAA side. But it's scrum goes up. Benar says poor squad selection if Nohamba has to play 10. Well, they did say in the uh, press conference, uh, Panache earlier this week that uh, Nohamba did play some of his rugby at the fly-off in his junior uh, career and I also had a video up in that uh, part of that interview asking if he's going to be the future Bach 10 so uh, yeah I don't know if they got something special going there with him but for me he's out and out a uh, scrum half and not a fly-off so here they come with another scrum here four minutes to play in this uh, first half and this time the penalty goes against the SAA side and it will be a penalty to uh, Munster uh, and uh, Andre Hugo there with uh, some sort of a headbutt after the uh, whistle went and I'm not sure the referee saw that but he could be in some trouble there disappointing again from this SAA side with four minutes to play in this game so now, with three and a half minutes to go, Panache says game over, absolutely. There's no way back with three and a half minutes to play as Ben Healy kicks this downfield and into touch, round about on the 10 meter line of uh, Munster. Back to the drawing board from Zwandile Stick and the rest of the Bok coaching staff. And in, apart from the fact that the forts were really good today, there's nobody really lifting up their hand and saying we want to go to the Rugby World Cup here. So throwing now from Neil Scannell, taken well there by uh, McDonald, And the driving mall coming now from Munster. Penalty advantage from that mall. South Africa has completely given up now. Big counter rough there from uh, Jean-Luc de Prea, But it's not going to come to anything. Penalty then from that... Uh, Line out and now a few handbacks attending here as uh, the patience from the SAA side just running a little bit low here. GQ says SAA way too many unforced errors, which is true as well. Nandre Ijufenta having a crack at these guys, but uh, so unnecessary to continue this nonsense. Into his glory says, surely this nonsense can't continue without heads uh, rolling. Why do we have to tolerate this level incompetence from the Springboks and SAA side? No balls to the back line whatsoever. You've got a point there, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Game plan, terrible. And uh, it's way too late to change your coaches now. Leading up to the World Cup, it's... Uh, Rossi and Jock is going to tell us that it's the perfect game plan and uh, if executed to perfection they will give every team in world rugby a trashing that is what they would say and it's probably true if they execute it to perfection it would work 
but uh, it's not pretty rugby and it's not rugby that we really want to see little knock on from that line out then uh, just outside the 22 from South Africa A and it will be a scrum down to Munster five meters outside of the 22 Sakabula says sorry guru I can't watch this thanks for the commentary and have a good evening no problem Sakabula let's hope uh, it's going to go a lot better with the Springboks on the weekend because this has been embarrassing and as much as this is not the Springbok side there's 14 cap Springboks in the side and uh, Munster's B side has uh, beaten them by 14 points and the possibility of some more points coming so after this we only got three viewers watching and uh, it just tells you how the South African supporters are they're very passionate about this game and uh, it unfortunately is what it is uh, this SAA side deservingly free viewers towards the end of this game Ethan says I'm still here Kuru and then uh, what time is this game over the weekend so the game starts at 10 o'clock SA time uh, Philip so it's a very late night game for the Springboks against France right so Munster just playing down the clock with 30 seconds to go they will make history by beating the South African A squad here today and uh, very disappointing from them as they just play this ball through the forts now as Munster Derek O'Manahu says uh, Munster left right middle and top so back with uh, 38 viewers it's not going to be the result that they want here as this SAA site will go down by a big margin today clock is up or the time is up on the clock and they just have to kick this one out and it's going to be Neil Cronin or gives it out to Ben Healy who's going to thump it into touch and 41,000 people have witnessed the B team of Munster defeating an SAA side packed with uh, 14 plus uh, Springboks in the side ridiculous I know but uh, it's a wake up call for South African rugby and it just shows you that Although we've got great players, we need a different game plan, not one that consists of kicking and just driving with the forwards. Uh, Shane O'Regan says, thanks for the commentary. Monster Man listening in New York. And then Mimania says, Ireland 2, South Africa 0. So with that, uh, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Congratulations to Munster. I think uh, the initial failure for this SAA side was the fact that they kicked too much in the first half and uh, relied too much on their forwards in the second half and never got going and uh, defensively had the lapses which led to uh, tries for Munster Munster credit to them playing superbly using their opportunities and getting the tries that was needed Hansi uh, Latekhan says uh, top does not seem to uh, bother there is something seriously wrong with our box setup we're excellent in the URC but the green and gold lost their ability to score points with, except with kicks and then uh, guys you see, see you at the game this weekend bring the dop and chop and boss and boltong and then uh, mountains of elysium says thank you guru loved your commentary thank you guys for tuning in i will see you guys on the weekend for some great international rugby we will be starting at, at around three o'clock sa time with, uh, with the first games of the weekend and then leading up to the 10 o'clock kickoff for the South African game against France. So until then guys, this is the Rugby Guru. Have a pleasant rest of the evening and I will see you guys on the weekend.